The wood for the body of the guitar is going to be northern ash. This is an eight quarter beam that I picked up from my local lumberyard. I chose northern ash wood because it gives a very snappy tone to a guitar and also because I'm a big Van Halen fan and his original Frankenstrat was made from northern ash. So I wanted to try as best as I can to capture his tone off the late 70s albums. Here at the miter saw, I'm cutting everything down to one and a half foot lengths. So this will give me four of these pieces from this one beam, which means once I book match them together, I'll end up with two blanks for two guitar bodies. Here at the thickness planer, I am surfacing off the rough sawn faces of these boards, as well as planing these down to their final thickness of one and three quarter inches. Now to book match two boards together, you need a very tight seam between the two edges. To accomplish this, it'd be really nice if I had a joiner, but I don't. So what I'm doing instead is using an electric hand planer to sort of give me as flat of a starting edge as I can accomplish with the tools that I have. Once I have that edge, I'll take it to the table saw and then make a perfectly square cut on the opposite edge. Here you can see really well what the gap looks like between these two boards before this goes to the table saw. So I'm marking boards one and two and you'll notice in this shot that the grain direction goes opposite ways. So in the event that this cups or warps, it will move with each other instead of making the problem worse. What I'm doing here is marking the two faces I need to straighten out. On board number two, the side that I marked with the Sharpie is facing up. And when I cut its corresponding board, number one, you can see here it's flipped upside down. What this does is make sure that if my blade is not perfectly 90 degrees to the table, the two angles will balance each other out and still I'll have a perfect seam. Here I'm using a sanding block to make sure that there's not any rough blade marks on the edge of this board. Now that the seam is tight, I'm using some wood glue and clamps to join these two boards together to make my final guitar blank. The first bar clamp that I put on to join these two boards together gets very light pressure so that the boards don't move and slide around. As I put on more clamps, I tighten each one of them gradually just to make sure everything is staying straight. I'm using paper towel and water in this shot just to clean up any of the squeeze out. This is much easier to do now when the glue is still wet than after when it dries. So the guitar I'm going to be building is a 5150 style or a uh, Kramer Beretta style guitar. They're both basically the same shape instrument. Um, anyways, I ordered a set of templates off of Amazon. These are really slick. They come in quarter inch hardboard so you can reuse them again and again in the future. And uh, here what I just did is trace out the body shape onto my blank. And I'm taking it to the bandsaw and I'm cutting shy of the line. I don't actually want to touch the line. What we'll do is we'll sneak up on the final shape later with a flush trim bit in the router. For right now, we're just removing most of the bulk material. On 
I'm putting the template back onto the body using double sided tape and I'm using the flush trim bit in my router to cut the exact shape of the guitar. The flush trim bit has a bearing at the top of the cutter that rides along the edge of the hardboard template and cuts that exact shape into the wood. Everything was going great until this happened. Not a huge mistake, it's shallow enough where I can probably sand this out and no one would notice. But what happened is the router base gets very unstable as you get out into these wings on the top of the guitar body. Uh, this is because there's not enough base there to keep the bit straight and it's real prone to tipping around and cutting too deep into the wood. Once the top side was done, the body got flipped over and I used a separate flush trim bit where the bearing is at the bottom of the cutter and I'm using this to finish shaping the body. Here at the drill press I am drilling the stud holes for the Floyd Rose tremolo. Also I'm drilling out the hole for the volume pot as well as using a one inch Forstner bit to clear out some of the bulk wood where the humbucking pickup is gonna get routed out. This isn't necessary, it just makes routing a lot easier. I'm hogging out the cavity for the humbucking pickup with a quarter inch straight bit. The quarter inch cutter head is the same size as the shank for the router which means that the shank essentially works like the bearing on a flush trim bit. I use the quarter inch straight bit because I don't have a flush trim bit that size and I needed the smaller radius to get into the corners for that cavity. Here I'm hogging out the slot where the Floyd Rose bridge will sit in. This goes straight through to the other side of the body. Now on the back side of the body, I'm using a much shorter flush trim bit. I actually had to buy this for this one cavity because the bits that I had were gonna cut too deep if I wanted to use the bearing. So I got this shorter one and I'm cutting out the uh, back cavity for the springs on the Floyd Rose. Also with that same bit, I am cutting out the back cavity which will house the volume pot as well as some wiring. I had to get pretty creative with this routing job right here. What I ended up doing was spacing my template away from the body, which is no easy task when it comes to lining it up over the wood that you need to cut. Once I had it in place, I used the same router bit and the bearing to make a very shallow recess. All this is for is to have a back plate to cover up the springs as well as the second cavity, which I'm routing right here, which will cover up the volume pot and the wires. Here with a different template, I'm routing out the neck pocket. This cut is critical as it's gonna affect the string action of the guitar. So the problem was I had no idea how deep this actually needed to be, but more on that later. I started shaping the body by putting on a half inch round over onto all edges. And then after that, I used my belt sander as well as the spindle sander on the edge of the belt to shape the body contours. There's one on the front of the body as well as the back. I like to use this cheap yoga mat to cover up my workbench whenever I'm sanding something. My bench top is really rough and the wood always gets marred up if I'm sanding directly on top of it. All that's left at this point on the guitar body is to finish sanding and to smooth everything out. So I started at 100 grit on the DA sander and I worked all the way up to 600. And that brings us to this. So I just finished sanding up. Well, actually that's a lie. I finished sanding up last night. But the last thing I did on this body was sand up through 600 grit. And right now it is totally done besides for finishing, obviously. Now, there's a couple things I want to touch on before I end this video. 
because this is the end of video number one in this series. All I'm going to show is just how I got the body done. Then the next video will most likely be the neck or the fretboard. Uh, but anyways, a couple things I want to talk about. One, those templates that I got are really awesome. I got them off of Amazon. The seller was called Guitar World. Now, these templates were great. They were, I mean, I couldn't have done this without them. But there's one thing that really, really annoyed me when I started using these templates. That is, they don't show how deep the body cavities need to be. On something like, um, let's just say these stud holes for the Floyd Rose, that's not critical. They can go straight through the body, and actually, that's what I did because I had to use them to line up the template on the backside. Stuff like that, I can figure out. But there's other things, like this cavity here for the Floyd Rose Springs, or for the pickup, or especially for the neck pocket, where they don't tell you how deep you need to make that cavity. So I'm sitting here wondering, what am I supposed to do? Because I can't just type into Google, you know, hey Siri, look up something for the 5150 guitar. Whoa. No, ignore that. I can't just punch into Google how deep should my neck pocket be on a 5150 or Kramer guitar. There's like literally nothing on the internet about this. So what I ended up doing is I took the template for the side profile of the neck and I looked at the part where it would bolt onto the body and I fit that in between the routing template which is flush with the surface of the guitar and I made it just deep enough to fit that. So the top of my neck will be totally flush with the body of the guitar. Now that's not my fingerboard. My fingerboard is going to be a separate piece so that will be about an eighth or a quarter of an inch off the surface which is how it is on a normal 5150 guitar. But that took me a lot of screwing around to get to that point. It would have been great if the templates just said, hey, make this neck cavity this deep. So at this point, I feel like it'll be a miracle if I get through this entire build and this doesn't come back to bite me in the butt. I feel like at some point, uh, my action is gonna be a little off and I'm gonna have to work at that when I get to that point. And I know it's gonna come from this pocket right here, not being at the correct depth but we're gonna figure that out when we get there. The other thing I wanna to touch on is the Floyd Rose. Now, I know on a 5150 guitar, I know that the Floyd Rose sits flush on top of the body. It's a top-mounted bridge, so it's a dive-only setup. It is not like on an Ibanez where you can pull back on the whammy bar. But in this template kit that I got, it included a routing template to inset the Floyd into the body. So I don't know if I was supposed to do that or not. I did not do it because I figured I can always do it later if the bridge is way too high. But for right now, I am hoping that it will stay a top mounted bridge because I don't want to have to inset the Floyd into the body. And that's really all I wanted to touch on as far as uh, the body goes. This was probably, it's probably gonna be the easiest part of building this guitar. Uh, the only challenge in this was figuring out how deep to make those pockets as well as uh, lining up all the templates in the right spots. So anyways, the first part of my guitar build is done. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow this series, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way Google will notify you whenever I post a new video. So thank you again for watching. Stay tuned for an upcoming video on how I'm going to build the neck of this guitar. And I will see you all there.